Hey guys, this video is brought to you by .tech Domains. It seems like as programmers, we're always working on some sort of side project, whether it's like a startup, software as a service, or a portfolio site. Picking and finding a domain is actually really, really difficult to do because there's several rules that you should always look at. I mean, the domain should be relevant, it should be short, it should be less than two words, ideally. Also, having the .tech in your domain signifies that you're in technology. So go ahead and join others such as Austin Evans, Consumer Electronics Show, and Viacom when it comes to securing your .tech domain. The link in the description tab below includes a 90% discount. Hey everybody, what's up? Alright, so in this video, what we're going to be looking at is the top web development trends. And this is going to be going into like 2021 because honestly, 2020 is almost done. All right, so first and foremost, if you're gonna be doing web development, you have to use Node, and Node is not, it doesn't mean that you have to use that as your backend stack, but you do have to use it for any sort of development these days. Like all the tools that you're gonna need for your web stack, especially if you're working with a team or something like that, then you're gonna to have to have Node. All right, so next up, what you're gonna to need to have is you're gonna to need to have Webpack, and Webpack is what holds all your architecture together, and it's gonna be how you minify, how you bundle, how you export your distribution, uh, all that stuff. So you need to have Webpack, and, and Node is what you use to even install it. All right, so the next thing up is you're gonna to have to have a client-side framework, and there's really three to choose from because that's where all the jobs are, and the order of importance are really where the jobs are. It's gonna be React. And then you have Angular, and then you have Vue. And um, yeah, so all three of those, those are those three, one of those three are gonna be where your jobs are. And um, if you wanna go off on like a one off and, and try to do like a, a smaller group, I, you know, for a client side framework, you could probably do that. But uh, if you're looking for a job, one of those three is gonna continue to dominate. All right, so when it comes to actually writing your JavaScript code, in 2021, nothing's going to change. You're going to either be writing in Babel, which is going to convert your modern JavaScript to an older version of JavaScript that runs in the browser, or you're going to be using the other option, which is TypeScript, and it does the same thing. So what are my recommendations? Like, I feel like you should probably learn the JavaScript Babel route because it's, it's just JavaScript. Uh, whereas TypeScript is slightly different. It's modeled more after like C Sharp and .NET developers originally back in the day. R really good language, uh, both of them. But um, the bottom line is that whether you're writing stuff in future JavaScript using Babel or if you're writing in TypeScript, you're really just writing JavaScript. And Babel is JavaScript. So to understand that is, I think, is important before you move on to TypeScript. All right, so next up is going to be Chrome. The reason why I think you should be developing with Chrome is because that's what everybody's using. And it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. Honestly, like Firefox is probably a better browser. However, these stats speak for themselves. So in May 2020, globally, Chrome has 80% of the market. I mean, I haven't seen that since like, uh, you could see a dip though from November. Um, now, we, we do have some new browsers that are, that are going to be entering the scene, you know, like Brave and uh, maybe DuckDuckGo. I guess maybe Brave uses DuckDuckGo. But uh, as, as we start, you know, to become more concerned with privacy, we can see, or we may see that uh, Chrome's advantage is going to start slipping away. All right. So the next thing is going to be progressive web apps. We're going to continue to hear about this going into 2021, and there's some benefits to it. But essentially, you can write your web application, or, or it looks like a web web application on a native device, like an Android or iOS. But really, it's just using HTML technology and some of the uh, newer capabilities of like uh, Ajax, HTTP calls, and things like that. Uh, also, it gives the impression that it's an installable app when it's really just using HTML technology. But we're going to see that more and more for apps that don't have to be like, uh, in my opinion, cutting edge. All right, so the next up is going to be static websites. So this is something that we've seen a lot. Um, and what's funny is I was going to mention Gatsby JS because that's what everybody talks about with static websites. Um, and it's actually not working. So at the moment of this video, that website is not even working. Uh, but another example is like Hugo or you got Next.js. Um, these are all static site generators. And we've really kind of come a long way in web development where we kind of like circle around and do the same thing over again a lot. But... Uh, basically, when we move to like these, you know, MVC frameworks, these backend databases for basically everything, we sort of uh, figured out that, hey, a lot of websites should just be static and probably should have always been that way. So we have these static uh, website generators now. 
you could technically write your own pretty easily with like Python or Node. I, in fact, for my own websites, I actually write my own static websites. Uh, but I use either Node or Python to actually write the HTML for me. All right, so next up in 2021, and we're lucky about this as web developers, but for the longest time, we've been promised that we can write like web apps using familiar web technology, like actual, and when I say web apps, I mean like actual native, like Android or iOS applications using our HTML knowledge and or like our React knowledge or our Vue knowledge. And like to date, I would say that it's been kind of a difficult road to get here, but like the tools that we now have are much better than they've ever been. So normally if you wanted to be a, a real Android developer, you'd probably go Java and Android route and you'd be writing on Eclipse and all this stuff. Um, and then like with Apple, you'd either use Objective-C or, or Swift and you'd be going that direction. But with these new tools, we now have React Native and we have Ionic. And we also have Flutter. So all three of these frameworks are really good. And with Ionic, you're using Vue. With React Native, you're obviously using React. And then with Flutter, you're actually using something called Dart. But um, the point is, though, is that when you're writing your code, web developers with technologies that they're comfortable with can actually write mobile apps that work on these devices. All right, so in 2021, things aren't going to change when it comes to CI, CD, which is continuous integration, continuous delivery. What tools are we, we using to do that? There's a few main tools. It's actually very opinionated, but essentially all these tools strive to do the same thing. Two of the most uh, popular right now, and by far and away, Jenkins is the most popular. But um, Circle CI is another one. I'm sure you've heard of like Travis CI. A lot of GitHub projects are linked right to these, uh, these tools. And this is something that you are going to have to be familiar with when you're doing production level development. All right. Also, nothing's going to change going into this next year, which includes the cloud hosting providers that are dominating the industry right now. So AWS, obviously, number one. Uh, Microsoft Azure is a close second or getting there. And then you have obviously tons of Google uh, cloud providers, things like Linode, who's uh, hosted this or sponsored this channel. Uh, they're a cloud hosting provider. The concepts are all similar. You have virtual machines that are being hosted and managed by other companies that have fireproof safes and walls and all that stuff to keep your data uh, protected. And you have to network into that stuff, right? So either you're going to be paying Amazon to, um, to, to maintain that for you or you're going to be paying Microsoft. Now, they have obviously the ability to scale to infinite proportions. You're going to pay for it, though. So... Uh, the smaller providers tend to be cheaper. All right, so also the current trend for UX developers, designers, thing, uh, people that are, don't actually write code, but they design layouts and stuff, that's typically how it works in the real world. They're using tools that are able to bridge the gap between what is possible with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then you know what the actual developer can use as a prototype and all that stuff. So it bridges that gap, right? So the designer um, or UX developer or whatever can actually just build their layouts in this tool and it's going to export some pretty decent html and specs for you and uh and we're going to see i think these tools continue to get better as well as well especially like with all of us working from home separately um, and then there's other tools as well that kind of compete on that level too which is sketch and then you have adobe's new product all right and then finally we're going to continue to see uh web assembly which is also known as like wasm but basically, we're going to have better graphics capabilities inside of the browser. We've already been seeing it for years now with WebGL, and then now we have uh, WebAssembly. But we also have all kinds of different augmented reality libraries and things that are coming to us, and they're open source. And it seems like more and more of these projects are becoming open source and free every single day. So they just want people to start playing around and tinkering and you know see what you can build. But I think the future of our world is not going to be like wearing a, a fully – immersed VR headset where we're like closed off from the rest of the world. It's probably going to be something where it's, you know, Google Glass type, augmented reality, whatever. Uh, I, I really think augmented reality is going to be the direction more than virtual reality. So whatever direction we go, we're going to have to incorporate these newer technologies, whether it's VR or AR. We're incorporating that more and more into the web, and it's all becoming kind of mixed into one. So if you're a web developer, you can look forward to the fact that things are going to be easier and easier to tap into. 
to try to build, you know, the next great thing. So the tools are really already there, but just being able to dive in and, and get started, that's the hard part.